Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Elligan. I'm a clinical psychologist in Chicago, Illinois, and this is Everyday Psychology. Today we're gonna to speak about dreams. Lots of people question, why do we dream? What is the purpose or function of dreams? And do we dream every night? Um, so dreams are mental activity that takes place during sleep. And yes, everyone dreams um, every day. Uh, although we may not all remember our dreams, we do tend to dream on a nightly basis, several times a night. Um, so uh, there are several stages of sleep, and one of those stages is what's referred to as REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And it's during REM sleep, where the eyes are darting back and forth beneath the eyelids, that a person is actually in a dream state. Um, and that state usually takes place, on average, about every 90 minutes. So if you sleep throughout the night and you get an average night's sleep of let's say eight to nine hours, people tend to have about four to five different episodes of dreams throughout the course of the night. Um, and one of the reasons people don't remember them often is if they awaken in a different stage of sleep. So there are several different stages. And if you don't awaken during a dream, oftentimes you won't remember that dream. And if you wake up during a dream, you can recall it. Um, so, um, Dreams happen on average about every 90 minutes um, throughout the course of the night. Um, and lots of research has shown that dreams actually tend to be very restorative, especially for people who have had emotionally draining days. Um, some research has shown that when they compare people that have had emotionally draining days versus people who have had physically draining days, those that have had emotionally draining days will spend more time in REM sleep. Um, so that there does seem to be a function associated with helping them manage and deal with the emotions that took place during the course of the day. And those people who have been um, in a very uh, physically draining day tend to sp spend a little bit less time in REM sleep because the muscles are recuperating from the stress of the day. Um, so uh, there is a function for sleeping and dreaming. Um, when dreaming, people experience a physical state that's called sleep paralysis. And the purpose of sleep paralysis is so that we don't act out our dreams. So it's almost like a switch is switched in our brain that turns off our ability to have voluntary behavior when dreaming. Um, and that's very important and very adaptive so that if we're dreaming about hitting a baseball in a baseball game, we don't slap the person sleeping next to us um, accidentally. Um, so that's what we refer to as sleep paralysis. Occasionally people will awaken during a dream and that switch hasn't been turned off yet um, or um, reactivated and they experience a very frightening emotional state where they're awake and they feel paralyzed in the bed and can't move. Um, eventually that switch gets turned off and they're able to um, get up voluntarily but that's a very frightening experience when it happens um, and the reason it happens is because the sleep paralysis hasn't been turned off um, at the same time the dream ended. Uh, another interesting thing about dreaming is uh, what's referred to as REM rebound. So people, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, dreams take place during rapid eye movement sleep or REM sleep. And people who um, have been sleep deprived, stayed up late studying for a final or a project, when they do go to sleep, they immediately go into REM sleep. Um, and as I mentioned before, usually REM sleep takes about 90 minutes to get to your first episode of REM sleep. Um, but for people who have been sleep deprived, they immediately go into dreaming or REM sleep. So once again, there does seem to be a need and a, a real function for dreaming. Um, and then what do dreams mean? Lots of different theories. You go to a bookstore, you find lots of different books on dreams. Um, probably one of the more interesting theories on dream interpretation uh, and the original um, works on dream interpretations by Sigmund Freud. And Freud suggested that there are two different levels of dreams, uh, the manifest content and the latent content. The manifest content is simply what you're dreaming about at a given moment. Um, and that tends to be very bizarre and abstract. Um, so Freud said it's not the manifest content that um, is the true meaning of the dream. It's the latent content, which is the metaphorical meaning of that dream for that individual. Um, so if you go to a bookstore and you find a book on dream interpretation and it tells you that um, if you had a dream and it had certain colors, these colors represent this theme, um, usually most psychologists would say that those books are, are a waste of money. Because for each individual, 
the context of the purpose of the dream is very unique. It's very idiosyncratic. So a, gr a dream with the color green for one individual can be very different than the dream for another individual who has this uh, color of green, for instance. The goal of the therapist or the psychologist that's working with someone with dream interpretation is to understand things that are taking place in their life and what is the latent content of the dream. Um, I, an example of a dream that I've had in the past, uh, there was a time when both of my uh, two younger boys were sick um, and they were having difficulty sleeping uh, through the night and at one point uh, my youngest son was sleeping on my chest and my older son was sleeping next to me. Both of them are sneezing and coughing and runny nose and I dozed off at some point and I had a dream that I was walking out of my back door into a garden that um, had lots of poisonous snakes in it. And my goal was to navigate through this garden and get to the other end without getting bit by the snake. I don't live in a place with a garden. Um, I don't live in an area where there are many poisonous snakes. So the manifest content is really irrelevant. And that's what Freud meant by manifest content. The latent content is, um, what is the function or metaphor of that dream? And probably for me, what it suggested is I was trying to avoid getting the bug that my boys had. Uh, so one of the, my son's sleeping on me. Um, so he, you know, his nose is running. I'm worried that I'm gonna catch his cold. My other son is coughing on me on the other side. I'm basically surrounded by these viruses and I'm dreaming about how can I navigate and not get sick. Um, so the dream doesn't come out as the content of what's happening in my life, it comes out in a very abstract, uh, metaphorical way. So I'm Dr. Elegan, and this is Everyday Psychology. Today we were talking about dreams and dream interpretation.